Welcome to Time to Teach with Tammy, the podcast that gives tips, advice, and suggestions to teachers by your real teacher. So sit back and enjoy, and oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Welcome back to episode 62 of Time to Teach. Today's episode is entitled, When Parent Relationships Get Strained, What to Do. So um, in today's episode, we are going to talk about exactly that. What happens when there is an issue in our relationship with one of our students' parents? What do we do? What do we not do? So I'm just going to talk a little bit about my own experience um, of what I've done and I have felt works for me whenever there's been some kind of strain or tension in a relationship with a parent. Um, So yeah, that's what today's episode is all about. And I thought since we're, you know, fairly young into the new school year, I thought this would be a great topic to discuss because you never know when something can arise and of course nobody hopes that we are going to have issues there but I say inevitably things are going to come up. Um, I'm going into my 10th year of teaching so certainly I am not the most experienced teacher, but I'm also not a brand new teacher. And I feel like teaching in 10 years has definitely shown me that, you know, you're just going to encounter so many different personal types, um, personality types. There's so many different kinds of persons out there. Um, Not only different personalities, but you're going to encounter parents who um, are dealing with their own issues. Some of them might be mental health issues. Um, there's lots of different things that you're going to encounter. So it's really good to just kind of be prepared and have, you know, a little idea of how you're going to handle difficult situations, um, especially so that they don't escalate and become bigger than they should. So the first thing I want to say, and (laughs) if you've been listening, especially lately, um, some of the things that I'm, well, one of the things I'm going to say is is something that you may have heard me advise in many situations, and that is to be a listener. So I talked about that on the episode about being a leader in terms of really being a listener to those who are on your team or whatever it is, um, whatever scenario in which you find yourself in a leadership position. And I also discuss that in terms of uh, communicating with parents. But I do think that is so key and it definitely should be repeated. So when we're working with parents and there is a strain, it is very important to continue to be a listener and try to understand what the issue is that the parent is experiencing. You know, why are they upset or where is their concern coming from? Now that being a listener doesn't mean that um, you're allowing yourself to be walked all over, that you're allowing yourself to be um, yelled at by a parent and I've never been yelled at by a parent but I'm sure there have been scenarios where perhaps that has happened but I just want to be clear I just think it's important that we listen to understand what those concerns are then we can address those concerns Um, we can you know if we see a different perspective and have a different understanding then we can also relate that to the parent but it's really important to hear the parent out because 
you know, everyone wants to be listened to. It does not feel good to just have someone disregard what you're saying. And that just sets everything up for failure when you don't give the other person um, a chance to be listened to. So I would just say, number one, be a listener and try to really understand what the concerns are. Um, next point is to try, keep your language positive. Keep your language positive. Uh, and just by that, I mean you don't want to have a negative tone. And this might be difficult because it might be in a, you know, you might be in a situation where it's, maybe the conversation seems to be going downhill. Maybe um, things, maybe the parent is being negative. So it is going to be hard. It's going to require probably restraint on your part. It is going to require regulation of your emotions for sure. Uh, and just, you know, what you really want to refrain from doing is saying anything that's personal or anything that's very negative or demeaning, anything like that. So when I say keep it, keep your language positive, I just mean that you really don't want to start becoming so defensive to the point where things turn ugly, okay? We don't want to to do that. Um, and that kind of goes to my next point. Don't take it personal. You do not have to take things personal. In fact, try not to, because I find this is the, and this is not easy again. It's, it's definitely difficult. Um, it's hard not to take things personal because a lot of what we're doing in our teaching, it is personal, you know, it's our personality, it's our teaching style, or it's the way that we do things. So it is easy to, to take things personal, but I would caution against that because it's not the healthiest way to go about um, any kind of conflicts with parents. You know, I can say for myself, I have the kind of personality that is, you know, pretty mellow. I don't really have conflicts with people. I'm not into drama. I could care less with the whatever anyone else is up to. I'm not about stirring the pot. I'm just about trying to do my own thing and not have issues with people. So if anything, I go kind of out of my way to not have conflicts. You know, I just don't, if I think something that I say could provoke a conflict, um, can be conflictual, then I'll probably just not say it. And um, this is not to say if there's something that comes up that I feel very strongly opinionated and I think I need to say it for the benefit of our students or moving forward as a school or a section or grade level, I will say my opinion. So this is not about just being quiet at all risks, but um, I'm just very, I'm, I practice a lot of caution when it comes to uh, potential issues because I, I don't know, I just don't like to have I don't like to have issues. I don't like when there's conflict. It's very upsetting and it takes a lot of thinking. You know, I'll spend a lot of time thinking about it, um, playing scenarios over and over my head. It's just so time and energy consuming that I don't even want to go there. So I am probably the least conflictual, conflictual person out there. Um, however, I have definitely in the 10 years that I've been teaching have had issues that have come up with parents. Um, so it's just inevitable, even when you do everything that you can, which I highly recommend, um, building good communication and working really hard to build those relationships but inevitably even when you do all of that and you're very proactive you're going to find out that sometimes there's just going to be something that happens 
Um, and it's probably more because it's the personality of that parent. And, you know, if they have a strong and a direct personality, you're going to experience it more than likely. Okay, my next little tip is to work with the parent. Um, so it really, I mean, it's hard to say there's so many different factors and so many different scenarios. So who really knows what the issue is um, in the hypothetical situation, but really try your best to work with the parent. So even if they're Re, if it's a request or it, it's whatever the issue is, try to at least work with the parent in some way if there is a way that you can. Um, so this might be like give and take. This might be or investigating, researching something um, to get more information because maybe it's you know, some kind of special request on behalf of the of the parent. This might be more so if it's like a parent who's perhaps overly demanding. Um, so do be willing to work with the parent if that is possible. If there is something that you can do, then be willing to do it, even if it requires going a, a little bit above and beyond what you typically would. I mean, I think the idea is we want we don't want to be walked all over for sure we don't want to be mistreated but if there is some way to work through a difficult situation or scenario or even parent relationship if there's something we can do that's inner power that's reasonable um then you know work with the parent if you can if you can in some cases it's a difficult situation and you're put into a position where you you have really ran out of options of what you can do so i recognize that you know that's not always going to be possible but if it is you know go for it um okay next point is be prepared to walk away or end the conversation if needed. Now, this would be a card reserved for your probably most um, worst case scenario, okay? So if things get to the point where you find yourself in a situation where a parent is yelling at you or disrespecting you or belittling you, it is well within our rights as teachers to end the conversation and or walk away. Um, especially if you're feeling threatened or you're getting to the point where it is not a comfortable situation, that is well within our rights to end the conversation so that it doesn't escalate. Um, this is because if the parent is in a high emotional state to the point where he or she is yelling and belittling you, threatening you, whatever the situation is, your emotions are probably going to be high as well. I, I've, I, even though we try to remain calm in a situation such as I am describing, I think almost inevitably our own emotional state will be rather high. So if it gets to that, um, you know, it is okay to say, you know what, I'm feeling very uncomfortable in this conversation right now. Um, I think it's better that we end this and resume it at a later time when we are both more calm, something like that. Now, having said all this, I don't think I've ever been in that situation. I've never had to use that card. But of course, if I were being disrespected, I absolutely would. Even though I'm someone who does not like conflict, I'm also someone who, you know, I know that I, I deserve to be respected and I'm not going to tolerate disrespect. I mean, I'm just not going to accept that. So to me, it's very important that I give respect, but it's also very important to me that I feel like I'm being respected as well. And I can get very offended if I feel there is any disrespect going on. And I think probably because I do work so hard to make sure I am respectful to 
everyone I encounter, or at least that's what I aim to do. So um, you can be a person such as I who avoids conflicts, but you definitely don't want to be a meek person who allows someone to berate you. In this case, the someone would be the parent. Again, I've never encountered that situation. I've never, ever had to pull that card. But if for some reason you find yourself in that situation, you definitely want to close the conversation, um, walk away because, you know, when emotions high, you, you just don't know. And how well do we even know parents? I mean, we don't really know them that well, unless you have had a sibling and maybe you have known the parents for a couple of years. I've definitely been in that scenario where I know I feel like I know some parents a little bit better than others. But for the most part, we don't know and we definitely don't want to be in a situation that might feel unsafe or disrespectful. So end it, close it, walk away if you need to. And again, that is to be reserved for the worst case scenario, a total, um, you know, belittling, be berating from the parent side. It's not something that you would be using in a normal circumstance. Again, I've been teaching now almost 10 years. I've never had a situation like that. I hope to never experience it, but we work with so many people, you know, among students and parents and every year new groups. Um, you just never know what is headed your way. It's just the reality of when you have a profession such as ours where you're dealing with lots of humans. So um, next point, kind of similar to that last one, but if needed, it's okay to get administration's help if needed. You can ask for assistance. You can go to your principal. I think any good administration is going to support you because a, a good administrator and a good administrative department does not want their teachers to be mistreated. I mean, that would not be a goal or something that... Um, a good administration would support or tolerate. I think you say support in Spanish. <laughs> Sometimes I get those words confused, but uh, they would not tolerate. A good administrative department definitely would not tolerate mistreatment of their teachers. Now, this is definitely something that I, a couple of times in my teaching career, have had to um, do go to my principal and ask for a little bit of help or assistance in a situation. Um, this only happened a couple of times and um, more so because, you know, maybe it was just a parent that was being very disrespectful and demanding something that was, you know, maybe not something that would have been within what I sh could be doing and providing. Um, and then just kind of getting to the point where, I, you know, maybe it felt a little bit like harassment. So in a situation like that, yes, I've had to go to my principal. That was like once. And then maybe another time when it wasn't so much disrespectful, it was more like um, reaching out to a parent and... <sighs> having a concern for student a student's behavior that I was seeing um, and then kind of not really getting support more like that behavior was being perhaps accepted on the parent side um, where it was a, and a behavior that definitely was not appropriate at our our age at that grade level <laughs> if you can tell I'm trying to tell you enough information with not, I don't like to get into to, um, super detailed um, scenarios because I like to respect everyone's privacy. <laughs> but um, I think those are really the only two incidents that I've ever had to reach out to my principal and ask for a little more support or assistance with the situation. There have been other things where maybe it was like, you know, maybe a, a request that I couldn't Maybe I needed help figuring out or I really couldn't provide, but maybe there was a way to get this request um, to happen 
for the parent. So of course there's been other times where I've had to bring a principal in, my principal into the situation. But in terms of, you know, can you please help me with situation? It's been like literally two times that I can think about and maybe there was another time, but I have since totally forgotten about it, but I think really just twice in my teaching career. So, but just that's just to say, you know, if you need support from an administrator, you definitely want to ask for it because I think good administrators want to be there to um, support teachers and in some cases kind of protect them because sometimes things can get awkward and uncomfortable. I mean, we just, you know, you just never know. We're dealing with so many different um, personalities. But yes, if you need to, just know that your administrators are there to assist you with those things, those incidents that are getting, um, you know, m more than maybe what you feel like you can take on. And and, and even in sometimes where it's just like, okay, I need to maybe have this documented, I need to just even alert my principal that this is happening, then that's good to do as well. Okay, moving right along. Um, next on the list is to, it kind of goes along with not taking things personally, but just um, letting things go after you have gone through the incident um, and whatever result resulted um, at some point it's very healthy to let it go now I know um, in terms of oh I don't I, I don't even remember that that happened of course we are going to remember what has happened I don't think it's even humanly possible to expect that we have forgotten all of those incidents um, hopefully there won't be all of those incidents. Hopefully we're just talking about one. But um, when I say let it go, I mean once you, that issue is done and resolved and worked through, then goodness gracious, you don't want to keep it alive in your mind. You really want to try to let it go as much as you can. Um, you'll remember it for sure. You'll you'll remember that it happened. But don't let that cloud of what happened really affect your interactions with the parent moving forward. You want to make sure that as you move forward with this parent, you want to try to keep future interactions as positive and as comfortable as possible. So just let it go in terms of don't don't just don't let it affect your future interactions okay just let it go let it stay in the past if you know you'll remember that it happened the parent I'm sure will remember that it happened but you don't have to let it kind of define what's going to happen in the future you really don't um so yeah just let it go uh, next, we want to make sure that we are separating whatever issues we are experiencing with the parents or any strained relationships with the parents. Keep that separate from the student. Uh, not saying that anyone doesn't, but sometimes I know it's easy to connect the child and the parent especially since oftentimes they look so similar that you when you see the parent you automatically think of a student you could just see you can see them in each other and you kind of make a connection when you even or at least I know I do so I know when I see a student I have their parents in the background and then vice versa well when I see the parents I have their child in the, the forefront of my mind. Um, but there's always some kind of connection. But in terms of what you're doing in the classroom, it's so important to remember that you and the parent share the same goal. That is success for that child. So you definitely don't want whatever issues are happening to have it cloud um, your relationship with the child. You don't definitely want to be very conscious that 
you know, you're not holding the child, uh, you're not holding anything against the child because of whatever has happened with the parent. And, you know, I teach five and six year olds. I'm not even sure that my particular students even know any of the interactions. I mean, sometimes I wonder, you know, if there's a frustration that a parent has spoken, I always do hope that they're respectful and they can keep, you know, let us work through it and not voice their frustrations in front of their child because same thing, like a child is not going to be able to to filter and, um, you know, distinguish between the two. Whereas we as adults, we can, we can separate the incident with the parent um, from our interactions with the child. So we definitely never, ever, ever, ever want to hold anything against the child based on experiences with the parent. Just keep those two separate and I think we're good to go. Okay, well, that's pretty much all of my tips, but I did kind of want to end the episode by kind of discussing very, very briefly, not even really discussing, just kind of mentioning um, the different kinds of... um, issues that you might end up having with parents. And before I even say that, I want to preface it by saying, you know, I was kind of, I don't know, worried about doing this episode because I hate the mentality of them versus us in any regard, you know, um, in terms of politics, in terms of teachers, administrators, in terms of teachers and parents, I did so very dislike the idea of them versus us. I feel like it can be very um, divisive, very divisive. So I want, and I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the episode, but better late than never, I guess. Um, I want to make it very clear that I think whenever we can work with each other, whoever the other is, in this case, it's the parents, Um, work with them and try to understand them, understand their viewpoints, understand their perceptual um, lens, which uh, is not easy because we're not them. But whenever we can try to step out of our shoes and into the shoes of the other, I think we're at a better place because that's going to help us get away from the them versus us or us versus them. And my this episode today is not meant to be that although i i fear it it might have a little bit of that tone and that's kind of why i was a little bit cautious and not sure i wanted to do this episode but you know i can i did decide ultimately to to include this topic because i just thought as teachers, the the truth is that we will run into some kind of issues with parents. And it's not because it's them versus us. Um, it's just that sometimes those things happen. So I want you to know, please try hard not to build a wall between you and your parents. But really what I'm trying to do is empower all of us with tools that we can use to help keep those relationships strong. Work with parents. We don't need to work against them. We are a team. We are a village. There there should be um, very little division as much as possible because that's the healthiest way. So when I discuss the different kinds of things you might encounter, it is not meant in a way that is to get you to think that, you know, these are the way that we categorize parents and all of them fall into these categories and and it's, you know, got to be on our defense. No, that's not my intention with this. Okay, having explained that. Um, some things, some issues that you might come across and I'm just going to label them and not really get into much details. Maybe, maybe a future episode, I don't even know. Um, But you can have issues where you might find that um, there's demands put on you from the parents that can get to feel maybe a little uncomfortable or out of what, um, you know, you feel is kind of in um, what 
you could be doing, what you're supposed to be doing. I don't want to say supposed to be doing because I think I'm someone who I don't mind going above and beyond. And if someone requests something that is appropriate and I can do it and we can make it happen, I am okay with that. But sometimes the demands just get a little inappropriate. They might cross the line and they might just be, you know, just not demands that um, they should be placing on you. So you can, you might come across that. You might come across parents who are just a little overly involved. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to say this is a, a really bad problem to have. I think it's great when parents are involved. Uh, but it's definitely its own issue in itself or it opens up its own can of worms, so to speak. Uh, but definitely the overly involved parents where you know, maybe they want to know every detail um, and it can, that can become time consuming and, and can start to feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, we also have on the opposite side of the spectrum is the under involved parent where, you know, they, you always know these because um, they will not necessarily seem to know the information that you send out in folders on the website through emails you know every possible channel of communication and they're not up to date on it um, papers go out and they return unsigned uh, finished work goes home and comes back in the same folder so maybe it hasn't been seen so that that can be another issue that you have um, Someone who just doesn't seem very willing to work with you or to abide by policies. I've definitely have, have had those where, you know, those aren't, I don't know, depending on what the policy is or depending what the issue is, those those sometimes could be things that you just, mm, you know, I'm just, I'm going to let that go because I, that's. I don't want to go there or whatever. That's something I can ignore. That's something I can just sweep that under the rug and let it go. I've definitely had that in, in terms of, um, you know, our kids, they have swimming class, but um, it's really interesting in Mexico. There's a big thing about temperature and maybe the idea that um, cold things can perhaps cause illnesses like the idea that your bare feet on um, the floor could possibly make you sick or I don't know, thing, things like this. Um, like my The lady who comes to do my house cleaning, she can't iron in the morning because there's something about the cold air in the morning and the hot iron and maybe it'll give her arthritis. I'm not really sure, but there's this temperature thing. Um, so a lot of times there will be issues because of the swimming uh, and, you know, like maybe so-and-so has a cough. So so-and-so can't go to swimming class because of the cough. So I've definitely have had like little issues there where it's like, okay, well, just so you know, for that to be justified or excused, I guess, um, for that to be excused, you, you know, we need a doctor's note. I, I've definitely had a few, um, you know, like I'm, that's ridiculous and I'm not going to bring in a doctor's note and um, it's like okay well just just letting you know that that's the policy um, so things like that so if it's something that you're you know you're like I'm not going to take this on I'm going to you know advise what I can um, but I'm not going to have to take every little disagreement you don't have to take every disagreement on and not every small disagreement ha has to become a war or has to be a huge point of contention. I mean, there are some things that we can just, you know, just let it go. But that's what I mean when there is a parent who maybe is not really willing to work with you or not willing to abide by certain policies and rules. But, you know, in some cases, those can be big things, but they can also be things that are minor. If you can ignore it, then, you know, yeah, just ignore it. And then I think what is probably a least likely category, um, and like I said, I've really only experienced this once for sure 
um, but a parent who's just rude in their manner, like they just seem to be very rude to you. And especially, and I don't mean like one incident, I mean the parent who just every time sees you is just kind of rude, just not friendly. I, I've seen that just like I said, I think I've only experienced that once. Um, I don't think that's very common and you kind of know when you experience it that, okay, maybe that's just that, that person's personality. Um, and you just kind of take it for what it is. So, um, yeah, you guys, that is it. That's what I wanted to discuss today. Uh, so I hope that you got something good out of that. I hope that it's been helpful because, you know, at the end of the day, like I said earlier, we really have, we share the same goals as the parents. We want success for our students. They want success for their child. And it's really just about trying to meet parents where they are, trying to figure out what we can do um, to really help and assist in a situation, validate their feelings, and work with them, you know, work with them and work hard, be proactive to build really good and strong relationships. And realizing that once in a while, there's going to be an incident, um, there's going to be an issue. But I think if we are equipped with how we can manage ourselves through those issues and manage the issue itself, I think we'll be a little more successful in the end. Um, because I think if we can pre-think these things out in the moment when it happens, we'll have some tools in our toolbox to be able to reach for and that is going to equate to success. All right, you guys, so that's it. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have some tips of your own, I would love to hear from you. You can tweet to me at Tammy J. That's T-A-M-I-J-1-2-3. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Before you go, don't forget you can catch your show notes online at www.timetoteach.libsyn. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. We're also on Facebook at Time to Teach. Don't forget to check out our Facebook group, Teachers for Effective Curriculum. And if you're an educator with your own podcast show, I invite you to join our brand new Facebook group, Teachers Who Podcast. Let's grow a community where we can network, problem solve, and discuss anything and everything podcast related. I'll see you there.